Look at this place, folks. I bring Sherpa Vicky to all the best establishments. I guess that's one way of keeping your fire going. Vicky stole my beer. I go back to get the camera and she's drinking my alpha. You bought two glasses, sorry. Oh. So I thought I'd have. Eferista. Hot. Look at this, I bring Vicky to all the best joints. In Greece, a beach that resembles rubble more than sand. It has a toilet. That was the yeah, that's a toilet. That's the only reason we're here. It's in good shape. Right on, folks. Calimera from Nafplio, Greece, which is my base for the next few days and is probably one of the most beautiful places I've been in my life. So I think we're going to use Nafplio, Nafplion or Nafplio, depending on which map I read or which information I read. I think the Greeks pronounce it Nafplio, so I'm going to go with that. Now it's, it's just at the beginning of the Peloponnese region of Greece, which is a peninsula that has actually been turned into an island by the creation of a canal and it basically just sits about an hour or two south of Athens. Now I've been receiving a lot of um, messages on Instagram of people asking me, Wendell, are you going to make any more videos from Cornwall? Because all of a sudden these videos are popping up from Greece. Well, fear not, folks, I will be making more videos from Cornwall, but I thought a bit of variety would be the spice of life, so there'll be a few videos coming from Greece over the next few weeks before I start um, venturing back into my explorations around Cornwall as the stormy winter sets in. But before that happens, I thought I would take you Cornwall lovers and any new viewers that I've got around a town which is probably one of the most beautiful places I've been in my life. And it's also quite similar to St Ives. So if you love St Ives, folks, you may well love Nafplio. Now, why do I say that Nafplio is similar to St Ives? Well, as soon as me and Vicky unpacked our bags here when we got to the hotel, we went for a wander last night. And it really does have that same beautiful feeling and that quaint architectural wandering wonderfulness that St Ives has but in a very different way but it kind of gives us the same feel it is set up for tourists quite well even though it is a real town but we think it's a bit like Greece's version of St Ives now all around I'm in the main square now basically it's quite a unique um, town architecturally in Greece because the legacy that remains is that of the Venetian period when the Venetians were um, set up in this part of Greece and so you get a lot of these incredibly beautiful Venetian houses with balconies overlooking cobbled and marble tiled streets and squares. I've literally spent the last 24 hours just wandering these streets getting lost and just in awe of how quaint and beautiful and unique it is. It's, it's like a, it has a little bit of an air almost of the French Quarter in New Orleans as well with the balconies overhanging everywhere. It is October now. Let's go up this alleyway here. It is October now so the days are quite sunny and then the evenings get quite crisp. Sunset's about seven o'clock. I don't really know where I'm going folks, but just join me on a wander around these quaint and wonderful Venetian alleyways.
when I was trying to find the hotel yesterday I did drive up here myself and that's another thing that reminds me about St Ives from this town is that the cars coming down the really narrow streets and the pedestrians having to stand back to the side just like on 4th Street I don't think I've been down this street yet and it seems like that is probably the street I've seen with some of the higher collection of uh, tacky tourist stores there are a wonderful amount of traditional tavernas here it's so difficult to decide where to walk next I think the only thing that will make me decide to turn right as I have is that the sun shines up here I found an old building that I wanted to show you folks so in the middle of all these beautifully renovated Venetian townhouses, most of them offering their services as guest houses. This is the uh, house where the founder of Nathplio, I think that was his house and it's kept in honour of him, but the legacy of the graffiti in Athens still pervades. And I did say when I walked around Athens that I thought that the graffiti there added to a character in the city. But for people to graffiti important old buildings, some more on here as well. I mean, what kind of person do you have to be to just tag beautiful old buildings like this? Not a fan of that. What kind of congenital toss pot would graffiti these beautiful old? Venetian facades. They all seem to be asleep because it's breakfast time at the moment, but there are quite a few. They seem quite friendly. They seem quite well fed, but there are quite a few Nafplio street dogs wandering around in the evening. We uh, spent eight euros fifty on some chicken heros meat last night to feed some of the street dogs of Nafplio. Hello. So we've just spent eight euros fifty on chicken meat to get six wild wolves here to have a feed. Yeah. Come here, doggies. Yeah. Come here. It reminds me of St Ives quite a lot because there are a lot of stores that seem to be designed for husbands that bring their relatively wealthy wives with them to this really romantic town in the Peloponnese. There are a lot of stores that are designed for men to treat their wives because I think that um, it's seen as a romantic town. A lot of places that are like boutique stores for women's clothes and ornaments. A lot of flashy cocktail bars that you don't necessarily see in other parts of Greece. A lot of coffee shops. A lot of those coffee shops double up as um, like wine bars and nightlife spots in the evening. And then we wander out into this wonderful palm fringed square and more stony Venetian buildings with ornate balconies. And then as I walk past the square here, past some more designer stores, you can buy designer clothes, designer watches. Get your Hugo Boss, your hill figure denim. None of the sort of garments that Wendell adorns himself in. And then as I walk out into the square here, I will show you probably the most iconic site in Nathplio, which is something that we will climb up to, and I'll probably make a video all of its own of the climb up to this iconic monument. Okay, let's walk over the road here onto this open area. There's a statue of the important founder of the town whose house I showed you before 
and then I'll pan to the right of that and show you the fortress overlooking the town up on the hill there. I can't pronounce that gentleman's surname, I know his first name is Yanis or Ianos. So up there is the fort that overlooks and protects the town of Nafleo. Here's one of the street dogs I was talking about earlier that we fed last night. Pretty sure I recognise this dog. And then, so the fort that overlooks the town is the second line of defence, I'm told, for when this was an important town that was often attempted to be invaded back in the day. And then from the footage earlier in the video, there's also a small fort on an island in the harbour there and that was the defence number one and this fort was the second line of defence and obviously the town has then grown in the foot of that fort over the centuries that have followed but there is also a new town over beyond this park down there it's quite a large town Nafleo it houses I'm told about 20,000 people and several hundred or more relatively friendly street dogs Nathplio was also, an interesting fact here, the first capital of the modern Greece in the 1800s, before that title was given over to Athens. Hello, Calimera. Friendly locals. I think they're probably quite used to idiot vloggers like me walking around their town now. As I've said, it is quite heavily touristed. I'm going to walk along the square here, past these cafes, back towards our hotel and join my wonderful Haitian other half, Vicky, who is waiting for me to finish this vlog and we can enjoy our breakfast. But I'll keep you with me folks. As I wander through this incredibly walkable charming and romantic town of Nafplio in the Peloponnese region of Greece. So this is interesting folks and something I've just learned from walking past and reading this sign but the founder of the modern Greek state Iannis Kapodistrias who is remembered by the sign here and I thought the old building uh, might have been his home but he was in fact I was reading about him on Wikipedia last night and I noticed that he died pretty young in his 50s but he was assassinated right here on the doorsteps of this church and that picture and that plaque commemorates what that happened there keep your eyes open folks and you always learn a little bit more about where you are so our hotel is just down this quiet street it was incredibly quiet last night. I have found since I've been in Greece for the last week or so, but pretty much everywhere I've stayed, well, definitely in Athens where I expected that. And then even in the small town of Kalambaka, I found that it's incredibly noisy at night with uh, scooters buzzing around at all hours and bibbing their horns. But here in uh, Nafplio, especially in this quieter part of the old town, it seems a little bit more peaceful in the evening. We can catch up on our beauty sleep. So this is our hotel, the Pension Daphne. And we are paying 65 euros a night, which is a little bit higher than we've paid so far. But it is a wonderful and incredibly characterful, quaint and quite romantic boutique hotel. So this is what 65 euros a night gets you in Nafplio. So let's take you out on the balcony with some natural light. These beautiful Venetian shutters. And we made sure this time that we got a balcony because that little bit of extra outdoor space when you're traveling around really makes a difference. Little family of cats over the way. We've even got a little railing because some of our clothes 
needed hand washing, so hopefully they dry. Vicky's waving at me over there. She thinks I'm mental, talking to a camera, showing people around the room, and there's no one with me. Yeah, so we've got this beautiful little Venetian balcony. Got a nice little sitting area here, outside of the shutters. Very, very uh, pleasing on the eye. Little cactus, some of our stuff drying. The shutter doors, again, pretty characterful, pretty cute. And then inside, you can tell the difference, the uh, last place, I don't know which order I'll put these videos up in, but the last place we stayed in, in Kalambaka, we went for a budget option at 35 euros a night, about 28 pounds, and it was pretty basic, clean but basic, here, beautifully clean, but beautifully, like, characterful, very boutique-y, you've got aircon up there, although we're not using it at the moment, the bed's nice. Last night, we, uh, we just sort of crashed and burned last night, so I didn't put this thick uh, cover over. But I think tonight we'll probably use it. It is quite cold at night. I quite like the wallpaper. Yeah, all the mirrors are these sort of like uh, Venetian gold. And then down here, nice rug, nice little table for me to sit and do some editing on later. Safe, always useful. Pretty much every Greek hotel has a little fridge because even though that one's empty, I might put some cans of Mythos in there later. Good use of space there with the uh, lack of a wardrobe, which is a rail. Although there's not much space to put your clothes, there's no drawers or anything. Not the biggest room, but a little bit more room to swing a cat. Maybe I can get one of those cats from over the way. Bring it in here and swing it around. You've got a view up to one of the uh, old buildings at the top of Old Town there. You can see the top of the church. What a characterful courtyard it is. They're really, really friendly on reception. Really um, clean and just like welcoming reception area as well. And then down here is where you have breakfast. And it was a really, really good breakfast that was included in the 65 euro rate. You got some scrambled eggs, some sausage, some Greek salad, a little bit of fruit, juice, coffee, some pastries. And last but not least, but still just as important, is the old bathroom here. A much better shower than the place in Kalampaka, the last place we stayed. Big enough, clean enough, a little bit of filler on the walls, but she'll be right. This heater, when you pull this cord, cooks you alive, so there's no need for me to pull that. Of course, the obligatory Greek toilet roll disposal bin, and another ornate mirror. We are down to our last clothes at the moment, so I'm wearing this creased shirt. Because we've probably bought enough clothes for a week, but we're away for longer than that. So I found a dry cleaners in the uh, newer, more residential part of town, and at the moment, we're waiting on picking that up tonight about 7 o'clock. Well, that's the room, folks. 65 euros a night. The Hotel Daphne, or Pension Daphne. I think that's the Greek word for hotel, or guest house, or something like that. Pretty pleased with it. We have booked in for two nights at the moment, but I think we're going to extend our stay, because this town is just so beautiful, and I think we might use it as a base to explore the near area around the Peloponnese. Right on. Here I am, swimming away, minding my own business, admiring paradise all around me. And the thought struck me that all of you that voted for Brexit, not only do we now not have enough truck drivers and petrol shortages, but we can't live visa-free in wonderful places in Europe such as this.